Eagle Forum Live with well-known conservative commentator Phyllis Schlafly. Set to take questions and comments. If you'd like to call in and talk, the telephone number is 1-800-736-3202. 1-800-736-3202. And we're talking today with uh, Dr. Judith Reisman, who I guess is the country's authority on this man, Albert Kinsey, who had such a tremendous effect on uh, the mores of our country as well as the educational system. Uh, He uh, was, uh, I suppose, the father of the sex education we have in the schools. And Dr. Reisman, I want to get back to this matter of of sex education. That used to be the job of the parents. And uh, and, uh, after Kinsey came along, uh, we seem to have all these sex experts who wanted to have classes in sex ed in the schools. What happened? Well, um, there was there was no nothing called sex education. There was no sex education prior to Kinsey. Prior to Kinsey, the whole concept, of course, was that parents were responsible for the sex education of their children. However, standing on Kinsey's fraudulent data, um, and the call went out from the Kinsey Institute and its trainees that parents were too hesitant to talk to their children about sex, that they didn't like to, to that they were using, you know, old-fashioned words, uh, and that, that the parents really needed to be educated uh, and the children needed to be educated. And what happened was Planned Parenthood, uh, which was a, 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 a spinoff, if you will, of the Kinsey people, and SICUS, the Sex Information Education Council of the United States, SICUS uh, was formed out of the Kinsey Institute. They, they, that was clear. There was a document uh, that uh, that uh, established the fact that that the Kinsey Institute had left an area of, quote, sex education in the schools open for SICUS to fill. So what SICUS, the Sex Information Education Council of the United States, that's Planned Parenthood's uh, Mary Caldron, who moved over to SICUS from Planned Parenthood, what these groups would begin to do was they would begin to bring Kinsey's sexua- sexuality, his variant form of sexuality, into the classrooms under the rubric of scientific sex education. That then, as I said, was supposed to bring us paradise on earth. And from there, all of the, there were three key training, four key training places in the United States that would give, so to speak, degrees or certificates in human sexuality education. Uh, there was an accreditation program established and groups that came out of that that called themselves sex educators and they began to give each other degrees and they began to give each other certificates. And from this came the, the fraudulent body uh, absolutely incorrect um, kinds of, of of lies that have been delivered to our children since uh, 1960s. Well, do you think all of the uh, teachers of sex education are getting their material or are credentialed by the Kinsey Institute come out of the, the whole Kinsey approach to sex? Well, yeah. I mean, in terms of being able to be accredited, um, they have to go through the Kinsey and accreditation system. They have to go through the scientific, the Society for the Scientific Study of Sex. It's called Quad X, or or S. Or they have to go. They have to go directly through their their fallout. If anybody wants, I can send them a a chart, a flow chart that identifies exactly. Uh, how this this whole process worked, starting at the top with the Kinsey data, quote unquote, the Kinsey Institute, and moving down through the University of Pennsylvania and New York University, which established health health components. Those health components then were going to teach quote sex education, and the Institute's Advanced Study of Human Sexuality in San Francisco, who did the majority of and does the majority of at this point in time. Uh, the sex education curricula in your school. So when your school is teaching homosexuality is normal, and when your school is, is teaching bisexuality and outer course and all these bizarre things, you have to know that all came out of the Kinsey belief system, the Kinsey mores, the Kinsey fraud. Dr. Judith Reisman, a special guest today with Phyllis Schlafly on Ego Forum Live, where we're set to take questions and comments on the toll-free 800-736-3202. You can join us like Andy, listening online at egoforum.org from Trenton, New Jersey. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. In many states, including New Jersey, 
parents have the right to opt their children out of sex education classes in public schools. And I wonder if there's been any organized effort to educate parents about this and encourage them to opt their children out of these bad classes, because I don't know that conservatives are going to be able to stop all the bad stuff that's taught in public schools, but maybe conservatives can inform and encourage parents to opt their children out of the bad stuff. Well, if I can respond to that, Andy, uh, yeah, I know the opt-out uh, option is is consistently being attacked, but I happen to be a person who believes that there is no way to really protect your children from these kinds of lies as they swirl around them. Unless we get into the courtroom, I keep arguing that our lawyers have to get into the courtroom and have to do, as was done with Big Tobacco, we have to sue Planned Parenthood on the right level and seek us on the right level, and they have to be charged with the fraud that they have committed and the false... uh, They've been obtaining monies from the taxpayer under false pretenses. It's been fraud and the harm, the injury that they've been doing to their children. And I believe you have a very strong case, legal case, in doing that, but nobody has approached it because they haven't had the right kind of information so far or they haven't chosen to to really use it. But we have it. The documentation is loud. The documentation is clear. It's rigorous. And it ought to be applied in a court of law. And that is the way... You mean that that the courses are actually harming children. Is that your argument? Deeply injurious, indeed, especially with every Everything we now know and have known for about a decade about the structure of the juvenile brain, that it does not mature cognitively until about age 21 to 25, and therefore when you are delivering sexual information to them in that classroom, there's a very good reason that they're not able to focus on their next class in in mathematics or Shakespeare. Uh, Well, in in regard to opting out, I think it's kind of hard to get your kid to opt out. The kid doesn't want to be uh, considered different from his friends. Uh, the The kids who were in the class come and talk about it at recess, and it's uh, it's really difficult for one or two children uh, to be opted out, despite the laws. What do you think about that? Well, that's my point. Uh, you're putting the children into a position that the adult society has put that child into because we have refused to take our responsibility in the first place, and that is in getting rid of these fraudulent and harmful uh, um, uh, propaganda activities. And I believe that that can be done and must be done in the courtrooms in order to protect the children and to let the public know, because the public won't know in any other way, to let the public know that the kind of information they have been receiving, that their parents have been receiving and making bad decisions based on, all came out of a bunch of deviant, sexually uh, perverse individuals. Kinsey himself was the most vile form of sexual psychopath. I can't go into the details here, but he was not, well, let's just put it gently, he was at best a bi-homosexual sadomasochist and a pornography addict and a whole variety of other things. And so, all of the information. Well, well, let me ask you this, Dr. Mm-hmm. Reisman. You've explained that. Your books have been uh, very detailed. Uh, this new book called Sexual Sabotage is, is an awesome book in describing uh, uh, the fraud of Kinsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, so a lot of people know this. Uh, uh, why, why aren't there more critics of Kinsey? Why... Uh, why don't we hear this uh, echoed by other people? And, uh, of course, a lot of parents have tried to stop the sex education classes, but it, it isn't enough. No, it's not, and that's the reason that um, I, I want people to advocate for a, a congressional investigation of the Kinsey fraud. Uh, we did a massive paper for the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is uh, comprised of all the conservative um, senators and Congress people, all the state, all over the country, and they agreed that our laws were gutted. Uh, the laws that had protected women and children and the family were gutted based on Kinsey's data. That's hard. That's a hard document to break. And so there's a lot of good support reason to go after a, a congressional investigation of Kinsey. Well, state. several several years ago, there was quite a push for that, and and uh, and, and dozens or scores of congressmen signed on as co-sponsor of the push for an investigation. Nothing happened. 
Yes, I know. We had 51 signatures from various congressmen and senators uh, in the country to, to, in 1995 to investigate the Kinsey research and to stop all sex education that would be based in any way, shape, or form on any of the information from Kinsey. Uh, and that, of course, would have ended everything that's going on in the schoolrooms. But the fellow who is carrying this, the congressman who is carrying that, that, uh, that, that, Act uh, had to go up for re-election, and a million dollars was thrown at him, and he lost the election. And we never were able to pick up the the slack on that and move it forward, which is a great tragedy. But the point of that investigation was to start proving to the to the American public that your sex education that you got as a as an adult and the sex education your children are getting was all based upon the fraud concocted by a group of sexual psychopaths. Well, I'm hoping uh, with the new Congress that we will have a lot of investigations. I've, I'm developing a list of things that I think Congress ought to be uh, having hearings to investigate. That's such an important uh, use of the congressional power. So uh, let's... Uh, uh, let's all try to uh, encourage them to go ahead with investigation, spread it out on the record. Oh, absolutely. I would love that people would do that. And it, it needs to be, it was Bill 2749, Ethics and Education. That was the title of it, the Ethics and Education Act, because of the entire body of human sexuality education that comes out of Kinsey. And well, now Kinsey's need- been dead for years. Is the Kinsey Kinsey? Institute is is that still functioning? Oh, they are still functioning. They just released in October fourth. They just released a new research report uh, that claimed that when which they were funded by Trojan manufacturers that in which they asked little fourteen year olds about their sex lives. Uh, I'd like to know how that is legal, but anyway. Um, and they concluded that the, their parents really need to learn from the children because the children they claim, 80% of the sexually active children, are using condoms. Uh, they said multiple sex is happening all over, and it's really great. Uh, the point of the whole Kinsey argument and his followers and sex education people that are his followers is that no matter what you do sexually, multiply in all sorts of ways, upside, downside, inside and outside, that there's no really bad, there's no bad consequence to all Dr. That. Judith Reisman visiting with us today right here on Eagle Forum Live. If you'd like to call in and talk, the phone number is 1-800-736-3202. 800-736-3202 on Eagle Forum Live. <laughs> 